Take a breath, step outside. Yat eh, anoftro. Thank you very much. Hello for coming on this evening to Indigenous Ways Wisdom Circle. And uh, as always, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional caretakers and ancestors for these lands we reside on in Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, 19 pueblos on and around us. Uh, wherever you're beaming in from, we'd like to acknowledge your ancestors and caretakers as well. As always, Indigenous Ways uh, is dedicated to bridging cultures globally, and we are utilizing this Zoom format and other social media sites to keep us all connected in this time uh, with our theme being Rising and Resilience. Tonight is a very, very special evening. We have a very, very special guest tonight. Uh, we've been talking about Black Mountain for a few months now and how uh, many people on the mountain um, have been left out and there's a water issue going on right now where there's no water for a lot of residents up there. Well, guess what? Tonight we have Lindine, and she is the CHR worker. And um, CHR is a really important acronym on the Navajo Nation. Um, it means Community Health Representative. So CHR workers represent their ca uh, chapters where they um, represent the people. And uh, it's very sparse and very uh, remote. Uh, and it's the way people want it to be. Remote is beautiful. It's fine. Most people want dirt roads because they don't want it to become tourist attraction places. So uh, where Lindeen is hailing in from is Black Mountain and she is a resident and belongs to the mountain. And uh, her mother is there and she, her mom is very, very beautiful, Jane Ballou. Hi Jane, hopefully Jane's on tonight. Um, I think my mom's on tonight. Hi mom, yep, my mom's here. Hi Harry, um, and my Aunt Emma should be coming on too. Um, so anyways, uh, without much ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass the, uh, the microphone to Lynn Dean, everyone. Let's enjoy Lynn Dean. Woohoo! Thank you, Lynn, for being with us. <laughs> well, I'm um, very excited to be on tonight. Um, um, just very excited to be here and to share some of my stories from Black Mountain and the people that live in the communities of Black Mountain and Forest Lake. I, my name is Lindine. In Shiagi Lindine, in Shiedo, Tuohane, in Shiedo, Tuodichi, in Fashishi, my Deshi, in Fashichedo, Kizishane, in Fashinale. Ado Bashish Chinkit for the Chicken in the um Sedashija down the Burt Corn Valley, Jit Aja Eaha, Shifijado, Aja Keda Hatsi. Um, I know there's a lot of Twitch Eatings in Horse Lake, they always welcome me as their baby, so uh, I just always like to make that clear. Uh, Akwado, um, Zilijin Barato, and Asha. So let me go back in English. I, uh, my name is Lindeen. I reside here in Black Mesa. I was raised here. I've gone to school off the res and have come back and now um, I love my job. I serve my people, my community, and most of these elders I grew up in front of, so I can't be naughty. <laughs> um, and sad to say, some of them made their journeys, and um, I, that's just the way life is. I was just saying that we were part of life is also that we have to deal with that. And you know, I have my share. I've gotten to know my elders more. 
through my job as a CHR and I know what they're doing at certain times of the month. It's, it's, it's funny and they, they really become part of my family instead of like a clan aunt or clan grandma. So, um, but yeah, I was raised here in Kitsili. Uh, Kitsili is actually the real name. And I was probably about fifth or sixth grade at the community school. At the time, it was called uh, Kitsila Community School. And I remember the principal, Dan, a white man that came from Boston, I believe. And he was our principal. And we went to school in a, like a little house on the prairie type deal. We were schooled in one building from kindergarten to eighth grade. And so the one summer, we all voted on the name change to Black Mesa Community School. Years later, I regret, I'm like, why did I even be part of it to name it Black Mesa? We should have kept kids daily. But um, yeah, so I was, um, when I see that little house on the prairie movie every now and then I always tell my kids that's how I went to school you know that's no biggie you know um, so there's a lot to to be uh, um, thankful for you know our I've seen this community school grow years even years later, it's still going to this day. Uh, I believe they have somewhere between 40 to 50 students enrolled at the community school and they um, travel quite a ways to get their students. Uh, we still have the outhouses. We had a wood stove in our school. grandson. A and kids not know winter stories in Chadna. Ah, she they had a and we will always um outvote the guys, and we would want to hear the changing woman story every time. So, I call the old bash the twizzle. I would always try to watch it. I do. I call the bagani. I am that bitch. I call John Bahajo. I was just talking about the community school that I had attended. It was just like Little House on the Prairie. We were all in there. We didn't have running water. We had an outhouse. Um, the bus driver, he was the bus driver. He was the bus driver, but he brought in, he hauled in our water. He hauled in coal. He hauled in wood to keep us warm. And we also had a local grandpa who was our um, storyteller during lunch. And in return, he ate with us. He had a hot meal. And so he would tell us winter stories. And he'd be sitting there. And we'd be all around the wood stove. And he'd be uh, making cow whip. And he would bring his own cow hide. I don't know if any of his family to this day. Yeah, so the, our little community school has come a long ways. Uh, 
To this day, they still enroll at least 50 students. Um, they, it has grown the school. It's now a beautiful facility. It has a gym, it has a little wellness center, multiple classrooms. Um, I mean, the bus drivers don't haul in water or wood or coal. It's heated, so it, it's, a, it's a really nice facility. It, um, I'm very thankful for the Twitter uh, people, the quiet double They gave up their land for our chapter house and our community school. They, they gave up uh, grazing areas. Very thankful for that. We've come a long ways from our elders meeting under the trees at the local chapter meetings. Now we have facilities. We are, we're so spoiled. We're inside. We have running water. We have restrooms. We have showers. And that's just, I'm just going to say that about the little community school and the chapter house, but I'll go back to introducing myself. I sort of got carried away and jumped the gun here. So I live in Kitsili. I live uh, nine miles west of the chapter house, Black Mesa. I live along the highway. It used to never be highway. It was all dirt road. Um, for many years, I traveled with the chain and shovel and mud shoes, and, and now it's not. So I'm thankful that the highway is runs right past my house for a couple of miles. I have um, three grown children, Adrian, Jared, and Megan. They're all out of my home. I live with uh, Thomas here. And uh, yeah, so I am also a grandma, which is, you know, they say grandma, everything stops. I tell you, <clears throat> I have a grandson, Aiden, Carrie Lynn Parker and Leslie, that's all by my oldest daughter. They're just beautiful human beings. And then a couple days ago, I became a grandma in Germany. My son in law is stationed out there, and my youngest daughter is out there, Megan. And so I'm very happy that I have, I'm a new grandma, glowing grandma. And, uh, her name is Noel. So I'm very blessed to be a mom, to have raised wonderful adults. And my son, he lives in Lawrence, Kansas with his girlfriend. And he had a bit of an announcement the other day. He says, Mom, Mom, I'm so nervous. And he never ever calls me in the middle of the day and right off the bat calls me mom. And he's like, Mom, I'm going to ask Tasha to marry me tonight. So we all cheered him on, and of course she said yes. And she's a young lady from Rama. They met at um, in school in Crown Point. So I'm very happy for them. And and that's who I am. And I live here. I have sheep. Uh, we have sheep, no goats. A calf named Blue. We have chickens. We do our own eggs. Uh, we have ducks cats, dogs, it was like a little farm here. And I also have elder parents that live next door to me that uh, I help care for and help whatever they need help with. And as Tasha has mentioned, my mom, she's Jane Ballou. And um, I also had grandparents they're, they've been gone for many years. My grandfather was the late John Rockbridge. He's a pretty well-known man in Winter Rock. And oh, we always hear wonderful stories. And that's one of the reasons why I say I can't be naughty. <laughs> because wherever I go and uh, in the communities of Four State and Black Mesa, somebody will always say, 
So they will tell me, well, your grandfather, John Rockbridge, said this and did this and has done this for our people. And to this day, you know, that's how pawn shops are running. And so it's a, it's a, and sometimes it's interesting. Every time I hear a story about my grandparents, then it's something new to me again. So it's, it's good. It's, it's good to hear those. It makes me stronger as the person and um, to know that, you know, my grandpa was not just my grandpa, it seems like he was everybody's uncle and uh, counselor. <laughs> but uh, I'm very lucky to be here today and to be in front of you and sharing my stories with you. Uh, uh, I was just saying that back then when my grandpa went to meetings in Winderall, he spent the night, it was like a two-day travel for him to be out there. And now it's, we're, we all have vehicles, so we just zoom into Winter Rock, take care of whatever. But back then, uh, my grandma used to say that, oh, he was never home. He was always in Winter Rock. So, but he did a lot of great things for our people. And he was always wanted to do things for his people, the better, for the better of his people, his community. So <clears throat> I'm happy that that. You know, that's who my grandpa is, and that sometimes you'll hear stories that I have never heard of. But <clears throat> so tonight I'm going to share with you my work. I, um, this is my fifth year working with uh, Navajo Nation Community Health Representative. I'm a senior community health rep representative for Four Slate Chapter, but I also oversee Black Mesa. Five years ago, when I was hired, I was um, hired for the Black Mesa community, and I was so thrilled. Um, prior to that, I worked with Chinle Public Schools for over 20, 20 years, and every day it was over 100 miles a day. And it worked fine because my kids were in school there, and. But I've always told my family, as soon as my youngest kid is finished with Chinle High School, I'm moving home. I'm going to find a job close to home, you know. And so, and that happened. So in that way, I'm very blessed. Little did I know that the CHR was going to change me personally as a person and, uh, and just the tradition, my, my culture. I, my mom, she spoke English and she she uh, can read and write. My father, my late father, he didn't go to school and he didn't speak English, but he was very fluent in Spanish, which was funny because, um, you know, that's sort of weird. But my dad was a, a railroad worker and when he was younger, I guess he spent um, close to four years, maybe, in a TB center out in Las Cruces or somewhere. So he spoke up, he picked up the language, and uh, my mom would say, oh, he had a Spanish girlfriend, too. So I don't know. But that's just, um, but I, um, so being a CHR, I 
learn to dissect my clans. I didn't know that. I just knew my four clans is sort of who's related to me in what way or how. But teasing me, breaking jokes. Um, I go back to that sometimes, the old teachings and, you know, with the, with my job, with, uh, even prevention, promotion, health promotion, you know, I try to put the teachings back in. Uh, so a CHR community health representative started in 1968. I was only two years old. A wonderful Navajo lady by the name of Dr. Annie Wanika started the program. Um, back then it was in the era of the TV. So, they, you know, she gone, she did a lot of work to, to make CHR what it is today. And today we, we wear so many hats, like for me, uh, one of the requirements to be a CHR is to have a CNA license. So I'm a certified nurse's aide, and then I'm also a licensed CHW, uh, community health worker. And uh, CHR, CHR and the uh, American Dental Association also put me through school to be a community dental health coordinator which allows me to do dental oral health education and also work chair sites if need be. So I'm very happy about that. And um, uh, I didn't know there was so many ways of brushing your teeth and flossing and, and I share that. And, and people always get surprised and just the little things with uh, oral health, but um, we do a lot of um, advocating on our for our elders from home to back into the clinic, uh, whichever departments that they're trying to uh, get into or be seen, like it could be optometry. Because of the COVID um, COVID nineteen pandemic. Our clinics have changed, so you, you can't make an appointment and just expect to be seen. There's steps before you actually get into the clinic now. And uh, one of them is getting an on-site testing, and then you go to your appointment. And it's a wait, like an hour wait or so. Um, and it's really, uh, COVID-19 is a really, horrible thing it's it snuck into the homes of our elders um, it has done evil things to our communities I think that at, at this time our elders are missing are starting to feel the stress of being alone being isolated and from our home visits are also different. We do our home visits from the outside. We're not allowed to go inside and we have to be six feet apart um, with our PPE, PPE, you know, uh, mask and gloves and no vitals. And they miss that. And I truly believe that sometimes the true medicine is just that one-on-one -on -one with your elder. And they miss that. Though 
قَالَ بِنَّا اِيَادِ قُسْنْسَانَا سْتَيْتْ آتَا خُلِيَهِ خُوَ نَخَانْ شْمِيدُو بِتْعَادُو انْتِدِنَا اُو يُوِسْتِي تَكُو اِبِنَّا شَحَا اُخُو اُتْزَادُو آ اَتْسْقُو شَحَا اِيِّلَا اِيَحْجِيَانِ اِتْسْقُو نِتْرَازِن تو اے او او تاش او پیشی کن یہا جگا تا اے دو دا گو پیش گو پیش گو پیش گو چیده بچ خود اندی او دا ایس او دا او دا ایس می آ دا او یو نکی مسان دو نکی چل دو بچ پیش دا ہو زنو گیس دیشن چیده بچ خود اینا کھا نی دو دا نی دو کن یہا دین ناتا این چیت می دو بی گیس دی دا نی لجش دین تا بچ نو دا یا تا کو ایو ایو یک اخاشی داد آه دینا قد ای به دهلو اکنون آشش به به دهلو ماسک و گلوز ای آتش نی شاه ای یه ها اون دیگری سیدا این دیجا تو میکی کد او یو آه آن هتی فلگان آدوا ناکری فش نی آت وی دکه افکجی ایو با کی هستن ای خالان که دنیا دو آت و ای هت اهیت هلودن لی تلو وشت جیان د. فرش نیز که د. اساسیت بین اطلاعات د فرش نی چه د جوک آدای دست آزما د هستی. شه ای اهی یت دان لود اگه دی خدا دی ای آن دیگه نیچیش تی دی دیش ادو که اشتونات ه. جو خود آی تاشا خود آو یا ناتش کن شد و خود آو تاشا بتایش نیست شما شنید اجا تولدش این نیست اگه خود آو شما نیلی بتایش نیست و شد و زیاد یا با این سه حالا میتونیم خود آو با این زنید و با خود آو با این دیگه هم شکات و مسند آدم که دنیست و دعات قد که به سیاه داز نید او یو اتین توان دیگه آدار دون در ایل کلیت شندین شاها در ناز نید بکن در جای کستاف لان بحث فینو در ای دون باز نشتر شده تو دو خیلی با این بحث دیگه خلا ات ای کد اتین دین هیکه یک دید ای ویشی سین در ام بری تینکل پر Tasha's um, indigenous ways, funding that she provides, or uh, all the people that help um, donating to our elders, not just the elders or the, the community members, uh, they're very appreciative of getting things. Some of our elders, some of our people, community people, uh, no matter what the age, you know, they like everybody likes freebies. They like um, the straw hats were hip, the umbrellas was cool, um, and now you know winter's coming, so we need socks, we need um, sweatshirts. Uh, yeah, it's just really great that we got those donations. Uh, a lot of people were very thankful, and I, I always tell the people that. You know, this is coming, this is the help that our own community member is doing, but she lives in Santa Fe, her family is right here from Oak Ridge, you know. So it, it's, um, and when you say that, they're like, hey, but my son is whose grandma? And Margaret Donald, yeah, if my son is there, and then, they'll, and then you go into conversation and they tell you, oh, hey, you know, that person was related to me this way. And, and they'll tell you old stories about winter camps that they used to share or uh, where they used to meet at water holes and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's nice, but I'm very thankful for all the donation that came to our community. Uh, we have people that still haul water. Uh, that's for livestock and drinking and cooking, uh, you know, so it's um, some people have it harder than others, but we're used to it. I grew up not having running water or electricity, so I know how that feels. Uh, we hauled water. Uh, we sometimes had to go all the way to Peabody to get water. 
Uh, I know people today from my community that travel the distance to bring in water early. And, you know, some homes still don't have electricity. Now, I recently came upon a camp that had neither one of those. So, grandma still hauled water. So, it's, um, it's a mixed blessing to live out here. But our elders are very strong. They're resilient in so many ways. They've learned to survive for many, many, many years. So, and they still keep keep doing it. Sure, into the net, into Ronnie Don has twenty eight. I don't eat a crisp twenty day yego don piatas kill. A Adam than Segi, ye nice so do you check at our me. He did me honey twenty a yaha to hollow de tanitin do. Art Kito's Alba Bashi, Parisian subway, the honey. Eskidashi, the hot aid and dear for Shaho, at the art, and has all good that you could a decision for art. Ado to see the kitchen, Ajito, the street or son, if you know. The Kodi, ah, Ade, ah, Tasha Terry, and the Nikye, Chiando, a Parisian. And the Yes, yeah, so I was just saying that some of the uh, community members will ask, so when is Tasha bringing out stuff? And they usually say, it cannot get out the girls that haul goodies. So I'm not sure if we're out of time or if we're at a place for questions, but our, we as CHR workers, we advocate for, on behalf of our elders. Um, Sometimes it's taking care of their referrals. Uh, we do a lot of health promotion. We do prevention disease. Uh, we uh, make appointments. We try to find safe rides or either it's just helping with home care, maybe a foot soak or um, we're not supposed to do medicine, but who, who's going to read, who's going to do that? So we, we do it, we refill their pill box for the week, or uh, we call in refills at our local clinics, so we make sure that they're, uh, they're up to date. And then uh, we also, the referrals sometimes, not just from IHS, they can come from uh, different departments in the IHS, maybe a diabetes program, or um, um, optometry, or podiatry, um, uh, even well, well, baby. Sometimes we'll have a referral from there. So we work with all ages. Um, when things were normal before COVID nineteen, we did a lot of health promotion, health education. We would go into the schools, and we would. For me, I would do like oral health, like I said, to the Head Start, and and that's also through. Uh, things that we get donated to us. A lot of times, American Dental Association will donate toothpaste and uh, floss and toothbrushes of various types. So I like them a lot. So, uh, yeah, so if we do a lot, and of course, I miss doing all those things. Now, our home visits are different, like I've said before. Our home visits are done all outside. Uh, we can't do group health education. Uh, so it's mostly all one-on-one. -on -one. We can't do vitals. A lot of the things, uh, I think I would say majority of the elders miss getting their vitals taken and reading them, what their numbers are. And, and so they, um, they'll always say, write it on my calendar, what my number is and we'll try to work on it or 
something like that. So uh, I and I tell him, be patient, you know, it'll, it'll come back. But um, and right now we're just stressing to our elders, be winter ready, you know, that get your firewood, uh, stock of fun things, you know, for the winter. Flashlights, always a biggie out here. And, um, you know, we, we also work with our local government, like our chapters. We, uh, when it's, when we weren't in the COVID season or this COVID um, pandemic, we were doing, helping out with Just Move It, uh, community wellness, and then also uh, like the flu shots. Flu shots are different now. It's all going to be drive through and only at the clinics. They won't come to the chapter houses. I think this week I've had a lot of questions, excuse me, on flu shots. So, and yeah, so that's my story on being a CHR. I hope I've shed some light on my work. Yeah, thank you very much, Lindine. Um, this is great. This is necessary. And this is amazing. The walk that you have, the life that you lead, the work that you do, all those people up there on Black Mountain, you know, uh, my aunts and my uncles, um, the Beltas, the Begays, um, Francis Honey and that camp. You know, the mm -hmm. people that live up there uh, really know what it is to take care of each other in the mm -hmm. community. And it's, um, it's so remote, but it's so beautiful. And I want it to stay like that. It's just special. <clears throat> it's not, mm -hmm. it's, it's never, Black Mountain is <clears throat> never going to be like a sellout. So thank you very much, uh, Lindine, for sharing. Um, I have some questions for you. And... Anybody else that wants to have questions uh, will be uh, welcomed back onto the screen in just a moment. I'd like to take this moment to uh, let everybody know that next week <clears throat> we have a presenter from Diné College. Her name's Latanya Thin, and she's a, a pretty amazing young woman that uh, goes to Diné College. So she's gonna bless us with her uh, wisdom next Wednesday, so please join us for that. You can also find information on indigenousways.org, which is right above my head. And then down below, we have all the social media sites. And those of you that really enjoy our indigenous perspective, our deaf presenters, our elders, our young people with old souls, you can go to our website and click on any one of those 50 uh, pictures of the presenters and you can replay it over and over again. You can share it with your family and those of you that are educators, you can use it in your classrooms for your curriculums because this is, as they say, from the horse's mouth. This is not anything written from a book or read off a script, although I do have a script that I follow just to keep me on track. Um, in the next 48 hours, this uh, show will be posted on our website just in case you missed it or you want to share it with your family members. Lindine, tell your family and your children in uh, Germany and uh, Kansas to uh, check it out. Go to Indigenous Ways and look for your picture and they'll be able to see your show in case they missed it tonight. And as always, uh, these uh, shows all have ASL interpreters and we do have the most amazing ASL interpreters that are conceptually accurate and culturally sensitive and all that kind of fun stuff that is really exciting for me. And um, we want to thank our sponsors. As always, we would not be doing this if we didn't have the people believing in us from the National Endowment of the Arts, West Staff, West Staff Cares, New Mexico Arts, New Mexico Humanities Council, and National Endowment of Humanities. And it's so funny when I sit in classrooms interpreting, sometimes I'm interpreting what the speaker is saying and they're going, good evening, I'd like to acknowledge traditional caretakers and masters for you walking into it. I was like, ah, la, la, la. you know, so I try to go at a prosody pace so that the interpreters can be really clear. 
So um, thank you, our board members. Uh, thank you, Terry, for working with us on making this uh, very accessible and clear and everybody else. Uh, all our board members are amazing. We would not be where we are today without them. Those of you that want to subscribe to our weekly newsletter, you want to learn more about Indigenous Ways, once again, go to the website right above and subscribe to the newsletter. We would really appreciate that. Next week, save the date. Oh my gosh, we have the Lensic Theater here in Santa Fe uh, that is hosting Keb Mo, a multi Grammy award winning musician. And this concert is $15 a ticket. It is on Saturday. And uh, all the proceeds are going to go to keep the Lensic Theater open. And the Lensic Theater is partnering with us and some other nonprofits and will contribute proceeds from that uh, fundraising concert to our Black Mesa run as well. So um, our debut video document is going to be opening the show. And uh, please support uh, the Lensic Theater and buy your tickets. They're $15. And as always, if you want to donate to our virtual events uh, and or our Black Mesa runs, please go to uh, our website or you can go to any of these donation uh, PayPal or you can send a check in if you'd like. We've had that happen too and that's also very nice. Um, so at this time, it's time for everybody to come on if you want. And if you're too shy to come on, you're welcome to type in a uh, message. And so far, what we see on the screen says, uh, great to see and hear you. Um, um, all our social media sites, um, if we see any kind of messages on chat, we'll present that to you as well. Lynn Dean, and of course, if nobody has anything to say, I have plenty to say because I've got a lot of questions for you. <laughs> we have another present, another person that's saying beautiful light and life. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. That thank you. Okay. Uh, let's not all talk at the same time. Does anybody want to say anything tonight? Julie, would you like to share some words? I'm not real articulate. But Lynn, thank you so much. So wonderful to get to know who you are a little bit. And um, I would be interested in, as time goes, what the specialty items that you're looking for this time. Um, and thank you so much for sharing your heart with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. All right, Christine, Donna, would you like to share some words? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a social worker, although I do massage therapy primarily these days, but I understand the kind of work that you do and how valuable it is. And I'm very happy to know that you're able to do that. Um, and I'm also very happy to know Tasha and Elena and to be able to contribute in some small ways. So um, anything, any any kind of list or information that they pass on to us, we will do our best to try to help and, and participate and ask friends and family to help so that we can offer support from many different directions. Thank you. Thank you for your sharing. Thank you, Christine and Donna, and thank you for contributing to Black Mountain as well. And uh, um, I've got a question. Something happened. I don't hear you. I'd like to ask. Um, okay, I'm off mute now. Um, are you supplied with PPE, PPEs from your work to contribute uh, to what you're doing on the mountain? Do you have enough uh, protective equipment, uh, i.e. masks and gloves and that kind of stuff? Um, so... We do get some of our supplies from our, our, our office and it gets uh, split up between 16 staff. So sometimes it's uh, two boxes of gloves, sometimes it's one. Um, and then of course other donors like you. Um, and then sometimes our PHM nurses or 
other our chapter house sometimes well, Albert's really good he'll give me a box of gloves or a mask so but we change with every visit we change our mask and our gloves so those go pretty fast but if I see sometimes I hear from the elders that they feel safer in the the one the masks that are bought and so if I see an elder with one that's just um it's seen its days, I will give up some of my um, masks and tell them, you know, here's four. And, uh, and I can understand that, but, you know, they think that because they see it in the, uh, at the clinic, they see them being worn, not the cloth ones. And so I, I, I can understand that. And I never say, no, 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 don't. And so I'm always willing to share my store-bought um, mask with my elders. So yes, it, it, it is a need. Okay, we'll bring some masks. Okay, the next thing is, is COVID back on the mountain? And if so, how much? So knock on wood, my, the two um, communities that I cover, Forest Lake and Black Mesa, they're still all recovered camps. Um, you know, we're just going back and telling our, the ones that are recovered camps that COVID-19 is still shedding. You need to give it at least three to four months. And we stress and stress, please continue practicing social distancing, wear your mask at all times, um, hand sanitizing. So we're still pushing that in our community. I have not seen any but my coworkers like in Chimui, um, Pinion, and Rough Rock, uh, I know their numbers are up. I'm not sure if it's because we're really isolated in the boonies. I didn't really see a lot of referrals, but it, it, it has snuck into some homes. And, um, you know, we lost a community member to COVID. So, but... Um, as far as today, I know that I have not gotten the referral on a new case. Okay, and um, I know that I asked you, thank you very much for that information, mm -hmm. uh, Lindine. Um, I know that I asked you the other night on the phone what you wanted us to bring in October for our next drop off at the chapter house okay. and you mentioned a whole list of stuff which is very so, um, what else yeah so i had uh when i was asked that i had told taj um flashlights are real popular uh beanies would be a good one some thick socks uh sweatshirt um probably size large and x large because uh our elders like to, to layer. And uh, I said, Ben Gay, Vix is very popular. Uh, Cedaminophen is good. Cough drops is good. Scarves is good. Um, gloves to keep their hands warm. It is good. Um, even matches, because you know they all start their fire. Where people are, we've started. I think we started our wood stoves. Uh, say three months or uh, three weeks back. And this morning I saw two homes that had their fire going. So matches are good. Uh, yeah, I think that's. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Lindine, and we'll yeah. get started on that next week. Uh, this weekend mm -hmm. is the con the concert, the Kebmo concert, so we'll definitely uh, put that on the list, and we'll put that out as well tomorrow in the newsletter, which mm -hmm. uh, I should be done with by noon tomorrow. And at the end of the newsletter, uh, people are saying what is needed, so I'll go ahead and add everything you gave to me on the list, adding the sweatshirts mm -hmm. with the hoodies over. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, uh, extra large and large and um, this has been a really nice break um, from because it seems like we were just going going and going and going 
uh, one yeah. trip after the other on top of everything else that's going on here in Santa Fe and in Albuquerque. Uh, but I've had a nice break. We've had a nice break. So I'm starting to gear up and get ready to go back up to Black Mountain. So uh, we'll keep you and the chapter house posted on uh, the date we decide on when I can take leave from work and uh, get off and go up to uh, Black Mountain. Probably uh, I'm going to shoot for the midterm for the semester, mm -hmm. um, somewhere in that week, so I can actually go up and uh, spend time with my mom and my stepdad oh. and stuff like that. So that'll be really fun, but we will certainly keep you posted and uh, we'll keep everybody else posted that it's, it's amazing our community that really, really cares. Our community really has a heart and mm -hmm. uh, has our community has started this movement, this momentum, this this run up to Black Mountain. It's not me. I'm just the boots on the ground with a fabulous, fabulous um, navigator that sits on the side that does so much work. I'm so grateful. But um, having the boots on the ground and being able like you, Lindine, is, is, is a gift because um, I still can. I'm still capable. Even though I broke my toe one time, I still went up there the next day in a mm -hmm. lot of pain and still delivered uh, because I can. You know, we can. We're still able to at this time. But in 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 years, I don't know if I'm going to be capable. But at this time, Biga, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Amber, nice to see you. Would love to hear some words from you. Do you have any words for Lynn Dean tonight? Amber helped pack several times. She comes here and spends oh. like eight hours packing, <laughs> boxing, labeling. Amber, we love you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, Lynn Dean. Um, I appreciated so much your, uh, your positive attitude, your gratitude for the beauty of that way of life and for the the things that you do have and um your way of taking something and showing how beautiful it can be you know it's um it's been an important lesson in my life and it's just lovely to hear you talk about your life in that way so much has been said lately that's so negative and it's so depressing and it's so mm -hmm. hard and so much grief and um and i needed to hear things said in that way today and so i really thank you personally for that um tash please keep us posted as to what's needed we will make this happen and um you know someone has always been there when i had nothing when i had nothing uh, mm -hmm. groceries came, you know, when I needed something, someone did for me, someone pulled me up out of nothing. And, um, and what a gift to be able to then pass that on. And so uh, much love to you all. I do hope to get up there. We'd love to take all of you up to Black Mountain with us. There's nothing like it on planet Earth. One day. One day, we'd like Lindine <clears throat> to explain to us, what is one day on Black Mountain your workday look like, Lindine? Give us a picture. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, I have grown so close to my elders that even if I, if I visit one day and I go back the next day, they're doing something different. They're feeling something different. And, um, and and through that, I've also lost elders. Excuse me. Uh, they were really dear to me. And uh, two weeks ago, I lost one that was pretty special to me. He was just a hardworking man, very nice man, 93 years old. But um, let's take today, for instance. Today, I started my day from Black Mesa chapter. It's, I told Tasha, I'm going to be home early. I'm going to get this stuff. I'm ready. Wouldn't you know it? It didn't turn out that way. I picked up 10 boxes of food from the Pinyon Food Dish, Distribution Center. And um, a lady, the lady, the chapter manager, 
at Pinyon Chapter is done with this big grant. And she gives really nice food bundle away. So I picked up 10 and started and I figure I'm going to visit this person, this person. I had my list right at the end of the pavement in Forest Lake. I had a flat tire. So I waited and waited uh, and I took off the stair, but Thomas came to my rescue. He was home today. So, so that took a, a, an hour off my schedule. And from there, it just, um, it was like one thing after another, the quick visit that I thought, oh, she says, she knows she's always doing this at this time. I'll quickly give her her food and move on. But it, it wasn't the way I planned it. So I had this flat tire. I had um, one of my grandmas with uh, Parkinson is now dealing with dementia. So I spent about 30 minutes there convincing her to go back inside and please stay inside. And uh, yeah, so, and then at, the, at another home, it was, um, can you reschedule my appointment? And it's like, we're in the, the, in the boonies. And I'm like, there's no phone service here. I have to go at least 15 minutes back to go uphill to place this call. <laughs> So today just didn't work out the way it is. And then I have this loner laptop that I was trying to quickly learn and be friends with. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's how my day went. And sometimes it's um asking for water for someone, going back and getting water, or you get to somebody, oh, so the other, like yesterday was another day that uh, I had a plan. It didn't go out quite well. Her grandma had fell, and I don't know how many, how long she'd been out there in, in, the, in the, you know, sitting in the ground. But I wanted to go back on check on her today but because of the flat tire and all these other little things coming up, it, I just didn't have time to go back. Um, but um, tomorrow I, I will. A few of the elders uh, have my phone number and I tell them, only call me if it's really an emergency on a weekday or, you know, on, sometimes I'm busy, don't keep calling me. And, and so they understand that, or either the chapter house, the chapter managers are really good to that. I tell them, call the chapter, they'll text me right away, and texting is better because they don't know how to text. So, so we've got the hang of that. So that's, um, yeah. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Lindine. And you know, the one day that uh, we got to go with you and follow you to all those sheep camps between yeah. Forest Lake and Oak Ridge, and it looked like we almost went into Blue Gap and uh, towards Pinyon, uh, and the vastness of the rides in between the miles and miles wow. and, and the roads, and just spending one day with you and the uncles. Uh, with our pickup trucks following each other and hauling those big old 55 gallon drums of water mm -hmm. and landing it on tires and the whole rope and the whole thing and then explaining uh, with your total fluent Navajo expertise to the elders how to use these hand washing stations and hearing all the stories on the mountain. I mean, that was like an eight, nine hour day and it was absolutely exhausting. And I thought, man, if this is what Lynn Dean does for a living, man, a Lynn Dean is, is blessed. You've got some really good karma coming to you, Lynn Dean, along with my aunt Marlene, uh, Bilta and uh, Larry and uh, all those guys up there on Black Mills Mountain. Albert Lee, tell them we said hi, okay? Tell oh, them we'll be well. coming back soon. Um, so everybody, we want to uh, tell you if you want to donate or pass the word on to anybody you know that wants to donate to the Navajo Nation, the best place to donate to is the, uh, Black Mountain. What can I say? Uh, it's on our donate site is on the website uh, pass the word on as always we want to thank um, our interpreters for making access available to our 
uh, deaf and hard of hearing uh, community members. And if you want to drop off items here um, in the garage, there is stuff starting to be dropped off. We've had neighbors show up with, a, the other day a neighbor showed up with a case of Clorox. And I was like, wow, cool. So uh, people know that we're up to this stuff. So you know where our place is. So come on over. And uh, you can also post through the mail. That works. Uh, we're going to be going up to Black Mesa mid to end, end of October. I'm going to have to find out my schedule, and I'll keep you all posted. Thank you. Thank you, as we say back home, a hehe, a hehe. Thank you. You see, the hehe are there. They call it Thank you to everyone that's helped the community, our community. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the other thing that was a big hit was the puzzles. Oh, okay, everybody, you hear that puzzles? If you have any old puzzles, you're not putting back together. Pass them on. We'll take them on. The grandmas that loved it. Yeah. All right, everybody, let's all give it up for Lynn Dean. Woo! Thank you, Lynn. Wet your hands, feel my face. Touch the earth, touch the earth, touch the earth.